Hi. So last time we talked, I showed you how the uh, organs, the major organs of the human body, the visceral organs and the bowel organs, are mapped in traditional Chinese medicine to this system of five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And last time I showed it to you graphically in constructive and controlling cycles. What I've done today, because of the, the larger number of things we need to talk about, is put it into a table for you. Um, and don't worry, I'll, I'm going to give you a link to a download where you can download a graphic representation of this so you don't have to be able to read everything that I've got up here. Um, but at the end of last time, what I talked about was how a traditional Chinese medicine clinician will use the diagnostic treasures of Chinese medicine to um, try to diagnose where the um, core issue is when a patient comes in presenting with certain symptoms. And they'll do that by, you know, talking to the patient and listening to them and observing things and smelling things and asking questions. So there are all of these diagnostic tools. And what I'd like to do today is show you how some of those diagnostic observations that a uh, traditional Chinese physician might uh, have help them diagnose the where to focus their energy in terms of dealing with a particular illness or a particular set of symptoms. So um, what I've done is, is put these into a table. We've got wood, which is, you'll remember from last time, mapped to the liver and the gallbladder. The fire element, which is mapped to heart and small intestine. Earth, which is stomach and spleen. Metal, lungs and large intestines. And water, which is the kidneys and the bladder. Now, I'm not going to fill out this whole table because it would be a really long video and mostly it would just be you watching me write things, um, which might not be as interesting as, as we would like. But what I would like to do is um, go through this just a few of them and give you a sense kind of of how this might work. So let, let's take the senses, for example. Um, each of the sensory organs is also mapped to an element. So for example, um, the element of wood is mapped to your eyes and fire is mapped to the tongue and earth is mapped to uh, the mouth as a whole. Metal is the nose, logically enough, right? There are lungs and you're breathing, so you're going to smell things. And water is mapped to um, the ears, right? So a clinician might say, you know, gee, are you having trouble with your vision? Uh, and that would give him a clue that he or she needs to look at the wood element um, for possible treatment opportunities. Or, you know, are you, are you smelling strange things? Or, you know, are there problems with your hearing? And each one of those uh, areas of a problem might indicate a problem in that, that area of element. Um, similarly for emotions. Um, your emotional state maps to different elements and different meridians. So um, wood maps, for example, to anger. So if a patient came in uh, to a, clinic, a, Chinese, a traditional Chinese physician and, you know, he's angry, you know, the parking was terrible and your, your receptionist is crap, um, you know, immediately that physician is going to be thinking, you know, maybe this person has a problem in the wood area that I need to look at. Maybe there's something with the livers or the gallbladder that I should take a look at. Um, similarly, other emotions map here, right? Uh, fire is related to joy, right? Um, and we sort of know some of these things instinctively, even though like they're in our language, they're in our culture without, uh, without really realizing it. You know, oh, I'm so happy for you, right? What do I do? I put my hand on my chest. I put my hand over my heart. I'm so happy for you. Why? Because joy is mapped to the heart. It's mapped to the element of fire. Um, you know, anger, that guy really gets my gall, right? Uh, it's, in our, it's, in our, it's in our language. Um, earth is, uh, is mapped to worry, right? Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this, right? And you'll put your hand on your stomach. Or, you know, I've got a knot in my stomach just thinking about this situation. Um, metal is mapped to grief, right? Or, uh, or sadness. I can't spell. Um, grief. Um, you know, I'm so sad I can't breathe, right? Have you ever met somebody who was like really, really unhappy? Or, you know, someone had a death in the family and they're like, I, I, I just can't breathe, right? Um, and fear. Fear is mapped to the water element and, and, and through the water element to the kidneys and bladder, right? <laughs> I was so scared I peed myself, right? I almost peed my pants. Um, fear. So 
these these mappings aren't um, are almost instinctive, right? I mean, we we have them as part of our culture and our, our our human experience. It's not something specific to Chinese medicine. It's it's part of the overall human experience. Um, tastes, right? Um, so, you know, wood is associated with the taste of sour, right? You're angry at someone. That interaction left a really sour taste in my mouth, right? That, that fight I had with my wife last night left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, joy is related to bitter, right? Um, earth is mapped to sweet. Um, metal is, is mapped to, um, why did I just go blank? Metal is, is, is mapped to um, spicy. And water is mapped to salty. So a clinician might say, well, you know, what foods are you craving? Or what foods do you really not like right now? Like, like just at this time, maybe not historically, uh, you know, maybe right now, are, do you find yourself craving sweets? Are you worried about something? And then that clinician gives a clue that they'll go back and look at stomach and spleen. And that's true for all of these different areas of life. Um, a person will, you know, a clinician will talk to them about, you know, what weather conditions do you like? Do you like it to be hot? Do you like it to be dry? Do you like it when it's damp, like a humid environment? What kind of environment do you feel like you're craving right now? Um, are you cold all the time? Um, are you sweating all the time? So, you know, those will give clues. Um, time. Uh, the, the elements are mapped to different four-hour time windows. Um, so, you know, uh, just an example, fire is mapped to the middle of the day, right? It's from like 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., I think. Yeah, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So, um, are you really tired at that time of day? Are you just like in the middle of the day, do you just want to go take a nap? maybe you're lacking something in the fire element. And then the, the clinician would say like, that's a clue that maybe I need to focus on heart health and, and boosting this person's uh, fire energy. Um, sounds, colors, directions, uh, east, north, west, south, or in the middle. Uh, all of these things in traditional Chinese medicine are mapped to elements and are diagnostic clues to the clinician about how to go about treating uh, whatever symptoms that the patient is, is presenting with. The other thing I want to say about this is um, the five element theory in traditional Chinese medicine is uh, fundamentally about balance, right? The theory is that a healthy person is balanced across all of these elements and illness creates an imbalance. And so when the clinician can identify an imbalance, like this person is constantly cleaving sweets, then you know that tells them something about where there might be a problem. Um, but the causality runs both ways. So as individuals going through life, a balanced life is a healthy life. And by imposing balance in these areas, we make ourselves healthier. We can return to a healthy condition if we're out of balance. So, you know, it's, it's not healthy to be angry all the time. It's also not healthy to be happy all the time. We think like, oh, you know, like the perfect life would be where I'm in a state of bliss all the time. That's not healthy. A balanced life has some anger, it has some joy, it has some sadness, it has some fear, you worry about things. That's normal as long as it's balanced. Your diet should have all these, these, this balance of flavors. When you, when you think about preparing a meal and you sit down to a, a plate of food, you should think, have, have I captured all these elements there? Is there something sour, something bitter, sweet, spicy, salty? Are all of these elements there? and in balance and in harmony? Or am I constantly eating salty food, right? Do I just, you know, do I dump tons of salt in my food? That's a sign of a problem, maybe with the kidneys or the bladder, uh, a problem of something with the, and, and similarly, um, you know, sounds. I, you know, I drive, I have iTunes on my, on my phone and I drive the genius tool in iTunes crazy because my music tastes are all over the map. You know, my, uh, my favorite music is jazz, but I also listen to classical and I have, you know, electronic chill music and meditation music and, you know, I'll listen to country and western once in a while, I'll listen to pop, um, even a little bit of rap, not a lot of rap, but a little bit of rap, there's raps that I like as well. So that, that balance is, I impose that balance on my life, I deliberately expand my music choices so that I have sounds in my life 
that uh, come from different areas. And I have moods um, that are created by that. And that balance brings us back into a healthy condition. So that, that's kind of what I want to say today. These are the, um, the elements, the, the um, diagnostic things that a clinician might observe and help that traditional Chinese medicine physician identify what area to focus their, um, their efforts in um, bringing a person back into a state of balance, which is considered a healthy state. And in your own life, don't forget that you can impose balance and should impose balance in these areas. Um, you know, you, you want seasons. You want to experience all the seasons. You want to experience different emotions. You want to experience different sensations and tastes and sounds and colors. All of those things are important. And too much of anything is a bad thing. And not enough of any one thing is, is a bad thing. We should be seeking balance in our lives. That's it for today. I'm Ralph Kenny, founder of Immortality, where we provide ancient solutions to your modern health.